There's a bunch of different gas tank styles and related components from which to choose. But for any of them to work right, they have to be installed correctly. And it's that installation that we'll focus on in this video. The most common tanks in use have some form of these tubes on the inside of the tank. This is a typical three-line system that has a separate line for filling and another for going to the carburetor. The third line is for the vent and that's universal on all tank styles. The weighted clunk inside the tank is what keeps the end of the pickup line in the fuel. As the attitude of the plane changes, the weighted clunk keeps going to the bottom of the tank where the fuel is. A common problem we see with this kind of system is when people make this pickup line too long. And remember that some lines will get a little bit longer once they're exposed to gasoline for a while. If the line is long enough for that clunk weight to make contact with the back of the tank, it can get hung up and stay out of the fuel. If that happens, you get to see how good you are with a dead stick. When buying a new tank, you have to pay attention to the packaging to see if they need a different stopper or tubing for gasoline. The stopper on the left converts the popular Dubro tank to gasoline use. One of the things I've always liked about the Dubro tanks is that they use soft brass tubing that you can bend with your fingers. Only the vent tube needs to be bent and that's to get it up to the top of the tank. The vent lets air bleed back into the tank as fuel is sucked out of it. A little later we'll show you how this tube is plumbed to prevent siphoning. Getting that vent tube near the top of the tank lets us get the most fuel into the tank. On some tanks, it's helpful to put a little piece of fuel tubing on the vent tube to get it up closer to the top of the tank. Duba recommends cutting this little notch in the fuel tubing on the end of the vent tube. That prevents this tubing from sealing itself against the top of the tank. The cap on a Dubro tank extends back over this neck when it's fully seated. And that prevents the tank from splitting when the plug is expanded to seal the tank. To determine the length of the pickup tube, I put the weighted clunk in the end of a piece of fuel line. I hold that on the tank and make sure that it's back from the end of the tank by about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. Then I can hold the cap against the front edge of the tank and see where I need to cut the tubing. Then I fully insert the stopper into the tank and then hold it up to light so I can see where that weight is. I turn the tank in a bunch of different positions to make sure that that clunk is always moving. Most planes today will specify where the fuel tank has to go. I always try to get the center line in the tank on the same plane as the center line of the engine. Also, we try and get the fuel tank as close to the center of gravity point as possible. That way a full fuel tank won't make the plane nose heavy, while an empty fuel tank won't make it tail heavy. Here I'm installing a tank in my QQ Yak, and I really don't have any options, but that's okay because they place the tank really well for the airframe. To help keep the tank secured in the airframe and prevent it from rubbing on anything, I always install it on a layer of half inch thick foam. After cutting it to size, I secure the foam to the airframe with a piece of double sided tape. Then I just make sure I've got the foam positioned right and press it down into that double sided tape. Then I put another piece of the double sided tape on the bottom of the tank and then press that into the foam to lock it in place. I found out the hard way that without double sided tape these tanks are just liable to be in a different place when you land the plane. Another thing the foam does is help keep tension on the straps that hold the tank in place. I can push the tank into the foam a little bit, tighten the straps up as best I can, and then I'll know that they're going to stay nice and tight. Between tight straps and a double sided tank, my tanks stay exactly where I put them. I always install the caps in my tank so the vent line is on top. Then I run that around the top of the tank, we want it just a little bit over, and then back to the front of the tank and then down through the bottom of the plane. This way the fuel won't siphon out of the tank and it still vents when the plane's inverted. The bottom line closest to it is the one that runs right to the carburetor. And this is where I put the Sullivan Crab Trap as one more filter before the fuel gets to the engine. And this is where the fuel line exits the fuselage and goes to the carb. The remaining line is for filling the tank with fuel and that runs out the side of the fuselage. I haven't decided what fittings I'm going to use yet but we keep it simple and we'll clean up this tubing once I get those in hand. Notice I have the fill line and the vent line both on the same side of the plane so I can see the overflow when I get the tank full. Using a good quality tank and then installing and plumbing it correctly is crucial if you expect the plane to keep running while you throw it around in the sky. There's nothing real tough about installing a gas tank, but it's easy to screw up if you just don't take your time. Of course, if you like doing dead stick landings or just don't care about the plane, just toss the tank in any way you like.